Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna give you guys a second round of my Q&A session for Middlebury College solely based on my personal experience in the past three years. So this is gonna be pretty subjective um, or maybe a little um, general in some context. I'm going to read off these comments that people made in the previous video about my Middlebury College decision process and say what I have in my mind. This week is I think week six of my quarantine. Actually, no, it's not even quarantine because Germany actually just lifted its lockdown this past Monday, so like six days ago. But I've been just like staying at home, but I do try to go out for a walk or a run because it's really nice and I'm actually leaving the country in just five weeks, which is pretty sad. So I'm trying to like take advantage of all that like fresh air before I leave my home. I was actually doing my problem set and I was like, hmm, maybe I should make this video because I know that the confirmation decision is due pretty soon, uh, May 1st. So I just want to give you a little more information for those who haven't yet committed to Midway or other colleges. So here we go. So the first person said, I'm a recent admin and this video is very relevant to my current situation. So thank you so much for making the video. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Have you ever felt the location of mid has kept you from having as many opportunities as you might've had in LA? Also, can you speak to the climate? I'm scared of the supposedly harrowing winter. Um, I think I already said this briefly in the previous video. Middlebury is definitely a real place, um, especially compared to a big city like LA. But I just have to say that LA already has a lot of stuff around you, so you can just go ahead and do whatever. But the thing is, Middlebury, given its geography, kind of allows the students to be proactive and find whatever um, they need to keep themselves busy. So this is actually not just me, but also a good friend of mine. We both like get pretty stressed when we don't have anything to do. So we always like try to find something that we would do to just to like not get bored. And I think that's something that's pretty unique in the sense because, you know, it allows students to be proactive and being proactive is a pretty important um, feature. The climate isn't that bad. There were storms, I think a few weeks ago, and then there was actually a snowstorm like a few years ago when the electricity was out and stuff, but it's been much better since then. And in the three years that I've, I've been at Middlebury, we didn't really have that much experience and I've never had a snow day. Like, however much it snows, you still go to class. Um, but I do recommend that you get like a jacket, a thick jacket. Before coming to Middlebury, I went to a mall and got myself this North Face jacket, like the thick one and I recommend you getting that. Even just one jacket really helps you. Like you just wear it on top of like a sweater or pajamas. I don't know what you wear to class, but you just wear it and then go to class and it keeps you warm on your way to class and back to your dorm or wherever you want to go. The second one is the sign between Middlebury and Amherst. They're so similar. What am I going to do? So yeah, Middlebury and Amherst are similar given that they're both located in New England. I actually didn't apply to Amherst. Not all liberal arts colleges are the same in general because like if you look at the Claremont Consortium, okay, the geography itself is what kind of distinguishes like the Claremont colleges from other like New England colleges like Middlebury because like they have their own culture and their tradition and just like that, Amherst has its own tradition and so does Middlebury. I would recommend that you find like what makes Middlebury unique from Amherst and vice versa. Um, and then the fourth one is a student who got admitted to both Middlebury and University of Rochester for class of 24 and have the same concerns as I did. This person is from New York City and is scared of the isolation. Um, Yeah, isolation was a big thing in my sophomore year and it, it's something that kept me from like enjoying Middlebury life. Looking back, I realized that like, I was going through this personal phase basically. So it doesn't really apply to like a lot of other people at Middlebury, I would assume. There are places that you can go from Middlebury. Like again, New York City, Montreal, Boston. It's very convenient to like just travel. So if you feel like you're isolated, it's nice to get that fresh air um, and get that change of scenery. When I'm at home, I, force myself to go out for a walk to get some fresh air and it refreshes my mindset in general. So if you're feeling isolated, just know that you can be your own motivation. That sounded cheesy. Um, the fifth one is, hi, I'm currently trying to decide between Middlebury and 
Georgia Tech. Do you think it's a good idea to go to Middlebury as a CS major? And can you comment on internship and job prospect at Middlebury? Right off the bat, let me just tell you that I'm a junior right now, so I'm not really applying to jobs. I'm an econ major with math and CS double minor, and I haven't really taken many CS courses to be very familiar with the CS department and faculty and staff. I just know a few, so I can't really say much about whether it's a good idea to go to Middlebury as a CS major. Like for sure, Georgia Tech is really strong in its tech side, like the STEM side, so I can't really help you with that. But in terms of internships, I can confidently say that there are many opportunities and there are also Middlebury alumni who can connect you to someone else very easily and we, because we have that like strong networking community and that strong community of being a Middlebury student, you can find internships from companies that the Middlebury alumni founded. And so if you go onto Handshake, which I actively use and which I very highly recommend using when you're looking for internships and jobs, I recommend that you contact anyone from Middlebury who interned there and or worked there or is working there and, and just ask them for like advice or like insight, what they have to expect for interviews or what it's like to work in that environment. It really like helps you prepare and lets you know where you're heading. Handshake is pretty much how I got my internship after my sophomore year and like junior year, like right now, like for this coming summer. Job prospect, because I haven't been applying to jobs, I don't really have that personal experience, but I can say that there's this center called the Center of Careers and Internships or what we easily call a CCI at Middlebury campus where like there are advisors in different fields like STEM, health, financial services or consulting and law and like arts, media and communications. And I think a few other fields that would really help you with like interview prep. There are also peer career advisors who look through your resumes and give you advice on to how to improve or give you feedback and comment on it. Like there are so many resources that you can take advantage of. So you shouldn't really feel um, too nervous. Like obviously every stage of like applying for a job or in internship is very nerve wracking. Like I also applied to like literally over 200 internships for this summer. Now, I haven't gotten an offer from like every place or like most places, but the places where I've heard back from were mostly from Handshake and kind of from LinkedIn. And I never really got an offer directly from Middlebury alumni, but they help you with like the resume referrals. I'm not saying that those resume referrals would like sl let you slide into that company, but it kind of like helps you in some sense because if there are other people through the connections, that would help you from like, like level one to like level five. It saves you a lot of time. The last one is pretty long. Um, this person is a recent admin. This person is in a semi-similar situation, Middlebury versus Cornell. CAS. I wonder what Cornell CAS is. Hold on. Oh, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> my bad. Um, okay, Arts and Sciences. So thanks so much for making this video. My biggest worry about med is not the location, but rather the student body. I've read a lot of stuff, some from current med students, talking about how the majority of the school is either elitist, preppy jocks, or very earthy outdoorsy people. Although I'm a half white, fairly wealthy and an athlete, I don't think that I quite fit the jock category because I just don't act or dress like a stereotypical jock. And I also wouldn't describe myself in a, as an earthy, outdoorsy person. Do you know if kids like me could feel isolated socially? That's a very interesting question. Right off the bat, <laughs> let me just say, I actually don't know the definition of, of jock. I don't know what that means. It does seem to have a negative connotation. This person is a little bit biased with like the student body or like the student body that this person is like assuming. Um, I do agree. A lot of people are coming from like prep schools from like New England or they're very outdoorsy because there are a lot of mountains and you can just hike up. I never <laughs> hiked the mountains. I'm like the least outdoorsy person, the least athletic person ever, especially in my class. In one of my classes, which is the economics of sports, literally the economics of sports. And I'm the only one who is far, far, far away from sports, any kind of sports. Like I like to work out, but like I'm talking about 
college sports. And I was kind of worried um, because I didn't know much about sports at all. And I talked to my professor and he told me that I really shouldn't worry. Like as long as I have the basics of economics theories, then it's fine. And it's also not just purely about sports. Like you learn a lot of other economic theories like monopoly or uh, wage discrimination, gender discrimination, salary gaps. There are a lot. So like, it's very interesting from my perspective to learn about that. If you're proactive and are like inquisitive and curious about what you want to know that you don't know yet, then I don't think it's a big issue for you to worry about. And you might feel intimidated. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. You might feel intimidated and feel like um, you, like your financial situation is a little bit comparable to like the situation that your friends would have in college but i wouldn't really say that that should be a deciding factor like you don't have to feel to be belong to a certain group there are also so many groups on campus there's a big percentage of student body that is part of the college sports or intramural sports and that's okay like you just respect it you know you don't have to belong to that group to feel like you're part of the society you can also like wrench out and meet other personally i hang out with a lot of pocs i didn't notice that until i actually posted my very first video of my first year first semester and then someone commented like oh you seem to like hang out with a lot of pocs i was like hmm like that's a thought that doesn't mean that i don't hang out with white people or like people of other ethnicities at all like i res like it's very important to respect people around you and so considering a group of people or just certain people jog um isn't quite the best way to describe people i guess and yeah you don't have to like be pro like you don't have to live in the stereotype or whatever stereotype you think um Middlebury has I also felt isolated socially last year as a sophomore, but the reason that I felt isolated is far away from what Middlebury is. It's just my personal like mental stage, so don't worry about that. When you first enter Middlebury, like everyone is so welcoming and it continues to be like that. There's a huge like strong support system around you, like your friends, faculty, and staff. I remember one time I was just hanging out with my friends I don't know if I said this in my previous video, it's been a long time since I talked about this, but um, it was in my first year and I was talking with my friends until four in the morning. Like we were watching this movie, this Japanese movie, I think it's like Call Me By Your Name or Your Name. I'm like getting confused with like two movies, I think, but it's like, it's a Japanese movie that's like pretty popular back in 2017 or 2018. I was watching that with my friends and then like we ended it and then we were just like talking about something and it just like went on and on and on until four in the morning. It was like the best. You're gonna find people who have similar mindsets. Just because a lot of people are like coming from preppy schools or whatnot, doesn't mean that you should feel like that or you should feel like you should... What's the right word? Um conform to that part of society. Also, if you don't feel like you don't belong to that group in the first year, it's like up to you to go to go find another group or like make your own group. It's really hit me hard that like people that, that you hang out with in the first year don't necessarily stick around throughout the whole four years. Kind of like heard that from people before I came to Middlebury, but it really does hold true to some degree. Don't try to like force yourself when you first come to college and then you feel like you have to like hang out with these same people like your whole four years because no one's forcing you. I really hope uh, it, uh, I hope I hope these comments helped you think more about Winterbury. I just want to let you know that how you want your college life to be really depends on you and what you value and what you prioritize. It's really nice to have like a list of what you expect of in college. When you go to college, what do you want to do? And what can you offer to Middlebury and what can Middlebury offer to you? I think it really has to be that two-sided journey of four years in order for you to thrive as an individual and a student. I'll see you guys in my next video. If you guys have any more comments or questions, please make sure to comment down below and I'll make sure to address those in my next video or comment. Yeah, bye!